I will be speaking about a project that we are leading at Wikimedia Argentina. Uh, for some reason, I decided to do this in English, <laughs> but my native language is Spanish, so something may happen there. And next time, for sure, I will use the interpreter services because this is like last Wikimania day. Yeah, we are all burnt out and well, you know. So I will try to speak slowly for interpreters to do their job. And also because it's quite a long time, we've got like 40 minutes and something like that. And the idea is nice, but not that complicated. So <laughs> I will try to give also some open questions and answers at the end, mostly in having as a perspective the possibility of networking between us if we are interested in these kinds of topics. So the charla is in Spanish, it's called Wikipedia and Journalism, Comunicar Diversidad from Wikimedia Argentina. I forget, I have to do this myself. Uh, so Comunicar Diversidad is a project we've been leading like for two years now or something like that. Um, this is the third year and it is a project that is aim to its focus in journalism, mostly from small media organizations. Also, it's not only because of small media, it's also the people who try to integrate their own journalistic networks to work together and not that big media uh, in our country. So we, would, we really focus on fostering positive interactions between the Wikimedia movement and journalism in Argentina. And also, we want to contribute through this project to reduce knowledge gaps within the Wikimedia projects. So, the one and the why, <laughs> following these journalistic questions of what, when, why. <laughs> we have, the first edition was held in 2022. We wanted, at that edition, we were really thinking about how to improve. Somehow this project has like three different goals. One is connecting with journalists and telling them why they can use Wikimedia projects to do their work. There is a second uh, goal, which is reducing the gender gap, that you will see later how we do it. And a third goal that it has to do with Wikipedia's local image at our media. In Argentina, we, ha we have like a very special context regarding the relationship with the be between Wikipedia, mostly Wikipedia and the local media, for some reason. <laughs> we have, you know, we have like really, um, how do you say this, uh, vibrant political <laughs> moment in Argentina right now, not in the good way of vibrant. And this tends to happen, like we have like a big polarization between two main parties. And Wikipedia is linked in the media to one of those parties. So, this is what they do, this is like a uh, instrumental use of projects. It's not only about Wikipedia, it is with many, many other projects. But what is happening is when there is any kind of tension with these two parties, they tend to use sometimes like, you see, Wikipedia says this party is so good and they are not and so on and this kind of stuff. So as we are having this local situation and we would love to have Wikipedia out of that political tension, we need some kind of help from other people within the media who can try to move a little bit the image into another position. So we had al also that kind of idea of open some type of advocacy debate around journalism and Wikipedia, and we are using this project to do that in a way. So it was, uh, you see, it's quite a lot of stuff in the same, in the same project. <laughs> we do that at Wikimedia Argentina. And we also we were really focused on giving these journalists the tools to work with Wikimedia projects. So, this is, we believe that this has have some kind of circular benefit. So the idea is that journalists learn useful tools and they can later, later showcase projects to which they receive some kind of microfunding from us. I will expect, explain this later. And they also can generate content to bridge the knowledge ga gaps we need to bridge from underrepresented communities. We've been working mostly, mostly with gender and LGBT communities, but there is other communities that take part of this, pr this project. The, they have like, the project has one, it is like a workshop, but it takes like five meetings 
of two hours each in which they get different training on Wikipedia Commons and Wikidata on how they can use these tools to be, for us, better journalists. And also in which we explain them what do we need from, Wikimedia, from the Wikimedia movement to have relevant sources created by them. For instance, if they go and have an interview with someone, we ask them to please ask their birth date <laughs> and place of birth and to put that at the interview, which is just a tiny information. It doesn't take that much. It won't change the point of view of the interview and it will be really helpful for us. So we explain this kind of stuff so they get on the idea of how they can help us. And also, um, we show them how they can use commons if they want to for their work. Uh, not only for the work because of using our uh, our staff at commons, but also because many of these networks tend to collaborate within themselves, like small media projects that collaborate to create content together. So we just tell them, you know, we are doing this. We are doing a little bit of the same, but from another perspective. So if you want to use commons to put your content because others will use it, it could be a great platform to have like some rights there and also be open and collaborative. So we are trying to connect these kinds of practices. And also, once they finish this uh, workshop, this, how do you say, formation in Spanish words? Training, I keep it on training, okay. So once they finish this training, they can apply for these microfunds. They're, this is like a small budget we, we offer them. So they prepare some projects saying which gaps they would like to work on. And we'll, we'll give them some support, financial, but also we help them in the process to create that content that, that can give us some relevant sources to bridge the gaps. So, every time that I say this, there is people who come and tell me, yeah, you know, but you are just forcing the notability uh, <laughs> police. Okay, sorry, but yeah, we know it. <laughs> it's not something that is out of our mind, but it is also kind of a purpose. And this is because we believe that gaps, they won't be filled just because the world changes by itself. We have to help a little bit on saying, okay, these are gaps. And these are gaps just because there has been some kind of epistemological silence around these people. It's not because they are not relevant. It's because people is not looking at them. That's part of the bias. So how can we work with the bias and keep some notability? We, we do believe in notability within Wikipedia. So how can we make that dialogues work? So, yes, we are encouraging the creation of sources. We are doing that. But also, we don't do it without having any sense of notability. We try, try to train these journalists in what notability is for us. We do this project in collaboration. I should have explained this at the very beginning. But we do this project in collaboration with two local media. One is called Periodicas from Santa Fe, and the other one is La Nota from Tucumán. These are small media located in different parts of the country, not in the capital city. And what we, we took from Periodicas this idea of archive of the future, which means that we try to uh, spot with the communities we kind of processes, historical moments on people could be relevant or may be relevant if we had enough information about them. So this is what we believe that we need to create information about what processes that are going on. So this is a little bit of spotting some kind of something that is shiny for us from a notability perspective and say, okay, this could be something that we, of what we need an archive. And we use journalism as a way of creating that archive of information that in the future can be useful for us if we want to work with these people or staff or processes or organizations that we believe that can have notability or they have it but we don't have enough information about it. So we create these vacancies list with communities. So this creates some kind of aside activities. What we do, for instance, is uh, we did it uh, as part, the first one was uh, during the Queen Wikipedia conference. We had 
this idea because we didn't we were really like working a lot on the Queen Wikipedia conference and we wanted to have some kind of local activity. And we were like, oh, what can we do? We cannot do an edition of because this is like too much. We're overloaded of work. So what can we do? And we just give like a, we open a conversation. We went to a bar at lo our local city and we asked some activists from the LGBT movement to come. And we had a conversation which our goal was mostly to tell people what was Wikimedia about, but also to create a vacancy list. Because we cannot, I mean, if you are not part of communities, you don't really you don't really spot the vacancies, you know. It's like, yeah, we do it together, I know that, but uh, there are some names and some processes and some organizations that are not so easy to be taken from the silence of history. So what we do is we, shift, we simply gather and we'll ask these three or four activists who were like very hist historical to tell their stories. But to tell their stories in a certain time gap and we told them why it was this about. So it was, please tell all the names, processes, and stuff you believe that were very important to create these stories. So these people simply start to talking and they were like, yeah, you remember that one that was doing that stuff at that moment and the other person who came and blah, 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 blah. And this was just an informal conversation. There was a lot of people there, like 45 or something like that. It was quite a big conversation. People started to participate. Yeah, but I was there and this is also happened and that book was so important at that moment and so on and blah, blah. So we created this list of vacancies. Then when we then then we provide to the journalists that are within the project. So it's like you know these are vacancies that the community identified, and that we do have in Wikipedia. We also take those lists and give them to the, for instance, Wiki Project LGB LGBT. So we try to connect the list and put them within the Wikimedia platforms as well. It's not only for our journalists to do the work; it's also for the community to be there. Then we also work with the vacancies that have been already identified within the Wikimedia project. So we follow red links, we follow categories and try to find which categories are, are missing. We do follow as well the list that other projects create, projects create within Wikimedia projects. So we try to a little bit of connect and take part of the work of others and give others a little bit of our work within this big effort we are doing to bridge the gaps. So just <laughs> to talk about metrics, because we always do it, <laughs> but mostly to spot that this, I mean, this is just last years. It is not a project that is focused in metrics, like something that is very important for us. We are trying to really do like this open advocacy conversation, bridging the gaps, and then also creating sources. So our number metrics may not be like, the, wow, you're doing such a great work. Yeah, uh, it's quite moderate, I would say. We, we were with four projects last year. There were built like 15 journalistic articles. It was really nice, they are available. We use part of these journalistic articles as sources when we have editathons, for instance. And we had 32 new quality images on Wikimedia Commons. This is just one of them, which is, I love it, so I use it <laughs> as an example. <laughs> And there were 22 people participating, of which eight became new editors. Because what is going on is that these journalists, once they face this beautiful world Wikimedia is, they just start to collaborate a little bit as well. For instance, if they are about to do an interview, an interview of, so of someone, and they are researching, and then they go to Wikipedia and they see that there is some information missing they found within the research, they tend to collaborate. So just to give you some examples, these are part of the journalistic uh, articles that were written. This is called, this is a local paper that is, what well paper, small media is, is presenters. They, they used to work with um, LGBT community, but not only. And this is uh, an article that is written about the process of in during which travesti or trans people in Argentina are trying to get a law. So this is part of the this archive of the future idea, you know, the law is not existing yet. But they, they are trying to get a to get a law who protect them from from, from who rep which repairs the the all that <laughs> happened to them during the national um dictadura militar. 
Santa Cruz Medical Detectorship. <laughs> Thank you. So they had, of course, a specific uh, sufferings within that process, and they are saying, you know what, we are really survivors here, and it was not easy for us when the dictatorship was torn. As because we were trans and travesti at that moment, it was not easy for us to get a home and a work paid and so on. So we, we've been in very precarious conditions after this, and we need some kind of national reparation because of that. This is just, I mean, I, I don't remember, if it's, not, if it's not more than 30 people that are asking this kind of reparation. It's not like a huge stuff. But they are trying to build this idea of a reparation law for communities that, that has been harassed and harmed by the state itself. So it is an article that talks about this process and gives some information of the people who is in within the process and so on. So we really believe that this, no matter if the law becomes real or not, it is something that it is nice to know if we are believing that an archive of the future can be built for this community. It was written by a travesti, travesti activist in Argentina. And this one, which is another one uh, that was published in periodicals, what we do is also the media that partners us, they are available for journalists to publish within the platforms if it is necessary, because there is some journalists that they come from their own and sometimes they don't have uh, places where to publish information that is not only about what is going on right now. You know, the media has this way of working that is we give you information that has to do with current processes, like very, 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 very fresh information. So if you want to talk about something that happened in the past just because you want to bring out information, it's not always that easy to publish that kind of articles. So our partners, if we need them, help us. So this one is an, um, an article that is about athletes that were at the Paralympic um, e sports. So this person went and, and interviewed two of them who were really notable at their moment, but, but nobody wrote about them because they were not in the spot for what media found it was important at the very moment. So this research came out as an article. One more. A little bit of the same. This is about uh, travesti and trans um, cupo laboral. <laughs> uh, how do you call? Quora. Okay, quora. Okay, so it's like uh, the quora went in. There is there was a debate that became a law. That is, there is must be a quora for trans and travesti people within public institutions. Uh, just to build a little bit of <laughs> this reparation. So this is an article that talks a little bit of how this process was held within the community. One more, you see this is all LGBT. It's because that very edition was only LGBT. <laughs> and right now we're trying to wide, uh, wider a little bit our, um, uh, the communities we work with. And this one is the one that has the image that I love that is called El Orgullo Ser Indígena y LGBT, that is pr the pride, I mean, it has to be with pride, the pride of being indigenous and LGBT. It is a community at the north of our country that they decided to stay in their communities. You know that LGBT people tends to be also kind of a diaspora because they have to leave their local places and go to big cities to avoid uh, horrible situations. So they just decided to stay within their local community and to create a pride <laughs> movement in their indigenous community. And so some people uh, from LATFEM went there and interviewed them and create, created these profiles of information. One more of the same uh, project. And one more, this trans person who is working there, creating stuff. So this is all. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have a lot of time, and my idea for this time that is left is try to understand if you are working, because I know there is a lot of people working with journalism and Wikipedia in their local context. I don't know if they are here or not, but if you are working with journalists or if you ever wanted to do, if you faced like barriers or challenges to connect the Wikimedia mov movement and journalists, and as Another open question is if you can think of local networks of uh, small media projects that can be 
interested in collaborating with Wiki Wikimedia and why? These are my two open questions for you, and you can have others for me, and I will take them. I only missed, you said you wanted to explain the microfunding further. Yeah, I did so a little bit. It's like they finish their training and they give, uh, they prepare some projects and they apply for this microfunding and they we simply like give them some little money for them to do the research. For instance, if they have to travel to a small uh, location to interview people. Thank you. I, I love to see this model, and um, but I was curious, kind of about the same question. But I, uh, when you showed us a few articles, um, what is the connection between those articles and your project? These were these were journalists that worked with you, and uh, they've found these gaps due to working with you. Or is there is there something specific you can share about that? Yeah, these are projects that were part of the training and also the microfunding, and these gaps were uh, spotted by all together. And they got the microfunding last year to create this content. And wha I didn't do it just because, to be honest, I thought this conversation was 20 minutes long. So there is a lot of information that I didn't put in the slides because I, was, I didn't know it was faulty. But uh, part of that content then was incorporating within mostly Wikipedia. Uh, for instance, the one that was from this indigenous community at the north of our country, right now, if you go to it's called Valles Calchaquíes. If you go to the Wikipedia page of that locality, you will see that it's like a small piece of information that says LGBT in this location, and it has a little bit of information of this pride movement that is going on. So this is uh, starting to appear in small places, but it's not just because of magic. It's because within the data tons we say, okay, you know, this content is available if you want to bridge these gaps that we all found out. So we try to do those. This will take a lot of time. We are not in a rush. It's just something that we try to build little by little. And also there were a lot of images, uh, of well, 32 of Larry to Commons last year, and many others, the one before, and there will be more this one. Um, I didn't put them out because I thought it was simply too much, but yeah, it's just images from people, uh, organizations, places, or processes that were going on um, that were missing within the Wikimedia projects. I'm going to try to do it in English, but I'd rather do it in Spanish because my English is so broken already. Um, pero lo que quería decir es que... Ah, verdad. Ah, ¿Qué me importa? Quien no lo entienda, no lo entiende. Um, no, que una de las cosas realmente que me parecen súper importantes de este proyecto es que para todas las personas colectivas y editores y demás que estamos trabajando con temas de diversidad, por ejemplo, temas trans, temas... Cualquier tema LGBT, no tenemos acceso a fuentes, los periódicos no nos publican, no hay nada donde podamos hacer referencias. Y yo, más que una pregunta ni nada, es como agradecer el esfuerzo activo que están haciendo desde Wikimedia Argentina, porque realmente que es, o sea, es como un, un, un punto de entrada y uno de salida, ¿me entendés? O sea, estábamos con la nada misma y ahora ya podemos decir, bueno, de aquí podemos sacar todas estas fuentes, entonces más bien como... Demasiadas gracias y para quien no lo entendió, lo siento. Uh, she, she was not doing a question really, but, <laughs> so, but I can. <laughs> yeah, and it's also that uh, the collaboration is open, you know, so it's a little bit of this idea that we can try to find gaps together and this can be replicated in other places. It's not that it's, I mean, it's here for you to be a tool as well in your local communities, and it doesn't have to be with gender and LGBT. You can work with any other content that is within a gap. So it is just, yeah, kind of a model, like a recipe. And for us, it is important to say that it, it is important <laughs> to be cautious with the notability stuff, because you cannot have someone talking about their best friend because they want to have it in Wikipedia but doing all the research that we already do, because we, we, when we work with CAPS, we're all the time doing the research about what is missing, what should be improved, and so on. So using that research we do all the time to bridge those gaps, having the sources that we never have because they are never published. 
this came out uh, a little bit because, because we wanted to work with journalists and Anna, who is around there, my D told me, hey, we should start working with journalists. We were really afraid about it, like what does it mean? What can we do and so on? Um, but also because when we were working with um, the brochure, a person bring out uh, a little bit before about the LGBT community and the gaps within Wikipedia, we found out that there was like, there was a profile, right now it is existent because the community is great, but there was a profile of an activist who was part of the organization who uh, struggled for the law of uh, the identity gender law, which is really progressive and is well known in the world and so on, uh, in the world of our tiny world. <laughs> but uh, it is internationally very, very progressive. And this person who is called, who was called Karina Urbina, she was she was taking part. She was a travesty activist doing a lot of uh, activism for this law to come out, and she died before the law came out. Just a little bit before the law came out, and it was really a pain for the community because she was buried, buried like she was uh, in the cemetery. The staff says their dead name, so it's like. I I don't know how to I mean it's re it was really painful so um so she died and the law came out like just a few months afterwards and she died with her dead name and it was really like a lot for us um I'm part of the LGBT community um and her, her profile wasn't there and she's completely erased of that process and she was completely erased of that process because at the moment she was struggling for the law to come out the uh, stigmatization and and the silence around that community was really 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 high. We only had a picture of her in Commons, um, and we were like, "How can this be possible?" And we couldn't really, we couldn't find sources. It was like she was completely erased of the history, and their their name, I mean, her name appears in that brochure. It's like we we explain this in in the in the the guide of LGBT uh, biography we did. Um, after that, a lot of people, I I know some of the of the Wiki Project LGBT started to do a, like a deep research. So we will get those sources, guys, and they did, and they created the profile. And now the information is in Wikipedia. Um, so it was like, yeah, like a, I won't say small, but some kind of reparation uh, for for that silence. So this was part of the process that gave us in a programmatic level, the, this idea of how can we connect this that is going on and the work we are doing to bridge this kind of content that is missing. I have another question. Another question. <laughs> Hi, Vic. Um, yeah, my question is because we are very interested in this topic. I'm a journalist myself. Uh, we started working with a journalist in Portugal. Um, she has like this platform uh, focus on culture and uh, black people, black heritage. So <laughs> we wish we do more about this. But <laughs> one of the things that I know you also face this as challenge because we are filling knowledge gaps. And I was looking at the articles and I have no idea of the context of media in Argentina, but I know Wikipedia and I know I know our communities. The question of notability that uh, I think other people talked about here. Uh, one of those challenges is, especially when we're talking about marginalized people, in media they are focused and specialized in marginalized people. Uh, they're not uh, being well received as well. You know, it's not only these biographies they're facing these rejections. These sources, these fonts are also facing rejections. And I think we don't have much uh, media literacy, I think, in the world in general. We don't understand exactly the process of what is, um, I, how can I say, a uh, confiable? Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> what is a reliable source of information? What is not? Uh, people are very guided by oh, I know this huge uh, uh, newspaper, so it's a good one. I don't know this one, so it's a bad one. Um, so I wonder if you uh, have any <laughs> input or strategy to, um, to make this type of, of media or fonts more acceptable to the community. How can we push? How can we 
start this conversation because we're talking about specialized media. These journalists, they are specialized in subjects um, because we're filling gaps, so help me. <laughs> I will love for half an answer. <laughs> I think that these kind of projects, we, we really have to believe that they are more qualitative than quantitative. And it's a conversation that we are starting. And we know the movement has quite a long story, and we will keep on having one. So maybe just trying to open the conversation and to go further. Um, in these cases, they are small media, like, I I don't know the, the word in English, but like autogestionados, like a small uh, networks of media. But sometimes the journalists do their work there and in other big media as well. So it's not that they are is so closed, like they are just dying and that's all. So that kind creates some kind of pollution, I would say, <laughs> like between uh, small projects and big projects. And it's also true that they publish in, in those uh, small media. But we also encourage them, like if you are creating content that can be accept, like accepted or welcomed in bigger media, you can also publish there. It's not that you have to do it in this small media. Um, yeah, I I think we focus on small media also because we wanted to support small media, like to be there to build those networks. And also because we understand they have a little bit of this, at least the ones we, w we they apply for the, we do some research on which media we work with. This, uh, we focus on media that is has some kind of collaborative ethics behind them as well. Because we understand that that will be the way. Because, you know, when you tell a, tell a journalist, like, come on, upload your picture to Commons, they say, come on, this is my work. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, I need money out of it. Uh, of course, <laughs> we do understand you don't have to publish your best picture. You can do, like, some aside picture. It could be uploaded to Commons, not the one that you will be selling. Um, but this conversation gets harder as higher you get in the journalist and media hierarchy. So we uh, started at the bottom because we understood that it was the o the, the main uh, yeah door to come into the conversation. It doesn't mean that we will still uh, stay there. I mean, we right now we are going wider with topics, and of course we would love to go wider as well with subjects working with us. But it's just a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have another. You talk about uh, yeah, getting professional journalists into Wikimedia. I have a question from the other side. So, Wikimedians doing journalistic work, because in Germany we have the problem that our press associations don't really recognize volunteer journalism, and so we often face some yeah very complicated. Yeah, it's not possible to get a, a a press card, and yeah, that makes things really complicated in some cases. And do you have similar problems in Argentina? Um, yeah, but it's also true that we have like a quite a densa, a co a like thick network or of a small media and independent journalists. So they have their own network. It's not that they, I mean, they have places to do their stuff. And also, that's why we ask our partners to be open to publish the content of the independent journalists that take part. Uh, if they want to be Wikimedians who want to be independent journalists or are independent journalists. Um, and regarding providing press cards to journalists, we don't really do that because we can, I mean, we, they are, unless they are Wikimedians who are part of our community and they, uh, they can go on behalf of Wikimedia Argentina, sometimes in those cases we do it. Uh, we have uh, an independent, well, I don't know if it's a journalist, it's a photographer in our community that loves to go to a sports event, so we do help him in having press uh, cards, but it's not like something we do like widely. It's not that we have a program to help uh, that kind of connections. We are not that big media, so it's also... <laughs> yeah. But your press cards of your association are recognized by the government? Nope. No. Okay. As press card, nope. Some small events they do on some places, but not in an official way. Uh, something that can be interesting, maybe regarding the big media. Um, 
So um, in my experience, the journalists are very busy, so they might be interested in helping and participating, but then just their daily job, the news cycle is just so, so intensive. Um, but um, a, a collaboration in, with, between uh, Wikimedia Finland and, and a famous journalist was that uh, she wanted to write uh, a book uh, called uh, Exciting Women in History. And then this was a nice way to, like, when she's writing a book, then she has more time. And, and then also, like, uh, we could organize events and people could come and find who are the exciting women that we don't know about yet in Finland. So uh, that's one example of a project that could work. Thank you for that. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to ask you: mm, Would you include? Okay, what is what is journalism? Okay, mm -hmm. because our problem in Spain is that the press is so corrupt; yeah. it has no, oh, we'd have no trust. And so I was wondering if the same techniques could be used for blogs or blogs of different groups. We we don't work with blogs because they, they do cannot become reliable sources for Wikipedia. We we understand that's important. I mean that conversation is very important for the building of knowledge in Wikipedia. Um, it is wide and complicated and difficult, but we understand blogs are not uh, now reliable sources, and and it's no. very difficult to spot like which. I understand some media have information, but that is more disinformation than information itself. So that's why we try to collaborate with some media that we do research on them. It's like if they apply, it's like, okay, what's your kind of work? Which is the network you work with? Which is your usual agenda? And so on. Mm, sorry, so you go looking for them. I mean, they go looking for you. You don't go looking for them. No, they come. They come to you. To the training, and they stay, and they decide if want to apply for this microphone. Um, and once they do, we ask them like a lot of questions about their uh, projects and with links and so on. So it's like, okay, so you say you do this, let me check how and who and since when and so on. So that's the way we choose the people who to work with us. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Sorry, Vic, could you tell us more about the process for language criteria in the writing of the articles, thinking that it's a very important issue in the Hispanic language about the all the writing stuff, the X, the E. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, for us, it has. Okay. It's, it can be a criteria that the newspaper or media may have. It's not that we force a criteria there. Uh, we tend to be formal in the universal way, <laughs> or maybe binary, uh, per hombres y mujeres, like something like that. Uh, also because we are going through a really, really, really high conversation about what is gender uh, struggle process, whatever, in our country. So right now, it is not a strategic to be very... Uh, how do you say this? Like, um, like very, uh, having a very strong position on language creating the content. It has to more with our local context than a strategic stuff. That if we use the X right now, that content is for sure not reliable. You know, it's like because of how the conversation is going on within the context. It's sad, I know, but <laughs> it's what's going on. <laughs> And I just want <coughs> wanted to answer to the German Wikipedia because of um, um, in Switzerland they ask for um, to Wikimedia for the press card and the Wikimedia the they sh um, organize so if you as a Wikipedian go directly to to the events or to the journalism they do not. But when you go through Wikimedia, so you have a change because in Switzerland happens like this. I just wanted. 
Um, thank you so much for the presentation. It's very inspiring, the work that you have been doing. Um, I have two questions. One is about the archive of the future. I really love the concept. And um, I was wondering if you can tell me more if there's more people interested in it or if it's attractive for journalists to think about the future and not just the moment. And the second question is if you have if you had or have any plans of working with students in journalism. We have those plans, but we can have them. <laughs> uh, it is not our idea, it's Periodica's idea. Uh, important to say that. Um, time's up, it's, this is screaming to me. Um, but yeah, it is something that it, it breaks minds when we talk about it. It's like you can talk of something you believe it will be important. Uh, and you can talk about biographies within your media and it can be nice to be read as well. It's not that only have you have to talk about what is going on right very, 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 very now. And it's also because when you when we find it, this is part of I will try to make the idea, but when we found information about this, in this case LGBT community or women or disability uh, disabled people, and that information was created at the very heat of the moment in the past, there was like you didn't like it, that information. I mean, the way it was written, the words that were used, a lot of that naming was like, just for an example, but uh, also if there is I all the information we found about some of the activists, it was because they were killed. So it was very not nice information about them and nothing about their life or their, I don't know, uh, successes and so, so, and so on. So we said like, you can go and talk about people who is not now in the spot of what for me is important and build this for the future. And also if you find someone who is important right now and, and we believe this is part of notability, you can build this for the future as well. So people to find this information, not only related to what society hates. You know. We are done with time. Is any Thank you. Thank you very much.